Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi, and I'd like to welcome you back to this series under the Political Islam section of our teachings. This one uh, is part of the Understanding Islam uh, video series, and if you've been watching the, the previous few episodes, you would have noticed, of course, that I have with me here in studio a dear friend and a brother. Uh, his name is Dr. Bill Warner. And he and I have been uh, really interacting with each other for the sake of simplifying such complex topic for many of you. And hopefully uh, you have found it and you will continue to find this particular <clears throat> video series to be helpful to you and also to share it with others who have really a desire to know more about Islam, but maybe they don't know where to turn to to find such a, a simplified way. And let's face it. It depends who you ask sometimes, and it depends what's the uh, motive behind the answers you're getting as well. You cannot expect a Muslim who is genuinely uh, uh, basically protecting his own teaching to come out and do any critical assessment for you. And the, um, you know, the, uh, the latter is also uh, part is true when you ask someone who uh, either doesn't understand Islam or maybe uh, have their own way of explaining it because of political correctness as well. So we need to be careful, of course, which sources to go to. And as a result of this, we're hoping that the many things that we'll mention to you today here in the video and also uh, some of the references and websites, uh, you'll find them to be extremely practical for your understanding. Um, Bill, uh, welcome back, of course. Um, today, I think we are going to talk about um, a, a, something that you coined, and at least that's the only place I, I came across with such a terminology called the trilogy. Yes. And uh, if, I mean, I know what it is, but I want you to explain it to our audience. What did you mean by the trilogy? Well, of course, the trilogy means three works, but here's the reason we need to talk about the three books, I'm going to call them that, or text. When you read the Quran, once again, if you know Islam, you realize something is missing. There are none of the five pillars included in the Quran on how to exactly how to practice them. For instance, it mentions prayer, but exactly how do you pray? So it turns out that we have to turn to something called the Hadith, which are the traditions of Muhammad. Now, we're going to, I'm going to refer to just one particular scholar named Bukhari, and there are about 7,000 of these Hadith. So this is a daunting task. I've never met many people who've read all 7,000 of the Hadith of Bukhari which I have done. I don't recommend it. <laughs> but again, you realize that the Hadith contains all the nitty-gritty of Islam. How do you pray? Well, here's exactly how you pray. I mean precisely how you pray. How do you have sex? How do you do everything you want to think of in Islam that you might do as a Muslim is found in the Hadith. And they're sorted out to some degree. So what I did was I took the Hadith and said, I'm only interested in what affects me, the non-Muslim. Well, it turns out 21% of the Hadith <clears throat> are about me and any other non-Muslim. So you then take and you can collect these and you realize, well, there's a lot of them on women. There's all the little nitty gritty details are there. Uh, I don't care about how to pray, but I do care about things that, are, well, let's just take an interesting fact. What is the shortest Hadith in Bukhari? War is deceit, three words. Well, immediately that's like, hmm, that's an interesting thing to be talking about in a religious text. Right, exactly. So, but anyway, the, I find Bukhari very interesting to read because it has all these little details, which when you read Bukhari at first, you may go, well, that's interesting. Then really, later when you study Sharia law, it's like, oh, wait a minute, that's the foundation for this law. Correct. So, Bukhari. So, so you have Quran, you have Hadith, and the last part of the trilogy? The Sirah, the life of Muhammad. Now, let's point out something here. If we look at how big, most people think that Islam is based on the Quran, right? Correct. Well, only 14% of the trilogy, if you take Bukhari, the life of Muhammad, and the Quran, only 14% of it is about Allah. That's right. And here is, by the way, a chart for people to follow along, of course. So we have Quran is 14%, the Sirah is 26% of the total text, the Hadith are 60 so I like to say Islam is 14% Allah and 86% Muhammad. That's true, because the Hadith is his sayings. Yes. The Sirah is his own life. Right. Therefore, you add him up together, like you said, it's 86% of the life of a Muslim. Right. So this is very interesting within itself, because if you think that it's the Quran is the basis of it, it's like, no. Muhammad is far more important to Islam than the Quran is. 
which I think is a very interesting fact. Right. And I want to add, you know, so you mentioned earlier, you know, uh, you read hadith and about how to pray and things like that. There is a group called the Submitters or the Quran only group. And the reason yeah. for that, Bill, as you probably have, uh, you know, interacted maybe with this before, is that they reject some of the hadith because they feel like, man, it's embarrassing. You know, <laughs> it's, 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 I, I, I can't believe that the Prophet would have said something like that. Right. I mean, uh, and they also acknowledge that the hadith itself was collected by Bukhari almost 240 years after the time of Muhammad. So in their mind, there, there has to be some corruption. And I can tell you why they think this way, because Bukhari himself collected 660,000 at least, and he narrowed it down to 7,000. You right. know, and the 7,000 contains some repetitions as well. You know, yes. so they say, well, wait a minute. I mean, maybe he missed this. Maybe he missed that. So they rejected. The problem is this. How do you know how to pray from the Quran? You mm. wouldn't know. You don't know. You have to go to the Hadith to understand how to pray. Mm -hmm. So so that's just a simple example. And what do you do about the 89 Quran verses which say you're supposed to imitate Muhammad? That's right. Exactly. Because you can't imitate <clears throat> Muhammad from what's in the Quran. That's for sure. Exactly. So, so this is why it's important. And then, of course, the trilogy, as Bill mentioned, is like the three works of the three sources, the three primary sources, if you wish, of how to be a, let's use this word, how to be a true good Muslim. If you want to be a true good Muslim, you need, to, yes, to know what Allah says, but guess what Allah told you? Obey the Prophet. So you have to go back now to the Prophet, and the Prophet says certain things, that's the hadith. And a prophet lived a certain life. That's the model, the practical model. Anything else you want to add to the uh, in terms of the trilogy itself from your own yes. studies? We have put our arms around the subject. That is, <clears throat> there's if it is not in the Quran, the Sarah the Hadith, it is not Islam. And if it is in Quran, Sarah Hadith, it is Islam. This is very important because people think that Islam is like the Amazon rainforest that it's so complicated and no one can ever understand it all. You can put your, you can hold it in your two hands. These three books are what Islam is. Let me repeat it. If it's in there, it's Islam. If it's not in there, it's not Islam. That's how important they are. That's right. And obviously, Sharia law as we know it, and there is a number of schools, by the way, under the Sunni branch of Sharia, and then number of school under the Shia branch of, uh, of school of Islam. Nevertheless, guess where they go to to come up with their own rulings? The that's trilogy. Really, that's all they can go to. That's it. <laughs> exactly. So this means, by the way, if you're talking with someone who is a Muslim and they say such and such is not Islam, and you go, wait a minute, I've read that in the Hadith or the Quran, so it is Islam. I don't care who you are. So this is something important. That is, Islam is a knowable subject. Just like you can study accounting, you can study Islam, and you can actually understand it. I, don't, I want to make that very clear. Absolutely. And this is why, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I honestly commend people who want to be, uh, uh, you know, politically correct with, with a Muslim friend or a neighbor. Uh, I also commend people who say, well, Islam has to be peaceful because my classmate is a peaceful person, you know, or my neighbor is a wonderful guy. Oh, we're not saying they're bad people, by the way. <clears throat> we're talking about the source of their identity. Put it this way, as a follower of Jesus, if you see Christians knocking down, you know, uh, you know, people's houses and raping their wives and things like that, you are going to say Christians do this. And I'm going to have to step in and say, no, 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 no. Jesus never taught this. That's pretty much what I'm going to tell you. In other words, the model for my faith never modeled something like this. And you're outraged because a Christian did this. How would you feel then when I tell you that the leader of Islam and the founder of Islam actually condoned such actions that I just mentioned to you? Why is that Islamophobia? And outside of that, it is not. Bill, you travel a lot. How do you see the influence of Islam in Europe, for instance? Well, it is astounding. Uh, there are large portions of many European cities now in which it's perhaps not safe to go, or at least you don't feel comfortable. And I've been in some of these areas. Uh, it's, each, uh, Europe is desperately trying to work out how can we live with these people. But Europe is also desperate to not to know what Islam really is, because they want to have the kind of Muslim that they can imagine. <clears throat> but instead, they get just Muslims who contain all varieties. Remember Mecca, Medina? So there are some Muslims there who are nice people. Then there are other Medina, which is jihad. 
And this is concerning people because, and by the way, much of this you don't find in the media. But for, let me give you an example of what's happened with immigration. I know a man who always goes to Germany for the Oktoberfest, and he's stayed at a family hotel. He's done this for 30 years. Oddly enough, he doesn't even drink beer. He goes to the Oktoberfest and doesn't drink beer. Doesn't drink That's beer. That's un-German of him. How un-German. <laughs> but he called my friend up and he says, do not come this year. That is, he actually told this man who had been staying with him for decades, do not come. You are not safe. My wife was attacked last night. Wow. But this is not found in the newspaper. So what we see here is, is that the media in Europe is dedicated to whitewashing Islam. And as a matter of fact, you can get into trouble. Well, here's an example of trouble I got into. On German Facebook, we got thrown off because we published two graphs. One was the increase in crime, and the other was the increase in migration. Well, that was hate speech, so we got thrown off of that. We got thrown off of Twitter. I forget what we did there, but it was always talking about immigration. So what has happened is, is that in Europe, it's gotten to the point where you can't talk about immigration because if you don't like what's happening, then you are an Islamophobe. By the way, I'm an official Islamophobe. I mean, I hear you, Bill. I mean, I, 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 the other day I made a, a Facebook kind of like a comment. I said, why is it that only Islam that comes up with a terminology like this, or at least those who are sympathetic to it? It's the only religion that if you speak against it, by the way, you're called an Islamophobe. Right. Uh, doesn't this indicate the domination of Islam because it's Precisely. forcing you everywhere now not to mess with us? Right. Don't say anything about us? Uh, if you talk about Christianity anywhere in the world, are they going to allow, are, is Twitter going to remove uh, your No. Tweet? Are they going to really get bad, uh, I mean, uh, get on your case because you said something bad about Jesus, for instance? Not at all. Why not? Because they're not afraid of the Christian, but they are afraid of the Muslim. And they're also afraid of political correctness has created this sort of weird police state in which there's nobody really at the head of it. Let me give you an example. When I was teaching at TSU, a university, Wynn Mint was a uh, Burmese man. And I said to him, I says, Wynn, I said, I've been racist in talking to you, talking about you. He says, what do you mean, Bill? I said, well, I've called you an Oriental. He said, and? I said, well, that's now been declared to be a racist term. He says, who makes these decisions? I said, you're not offended? He says, no. Yeah. So, so he's, but the, the importance is who makes these decisions? Exactly. There doesn't seem to be, and yet they get enforced, let me assure you. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, it's, it's the only religion, by the way, that talks about something called Sharia law compliance financial system. Yes. Do we have a Christian uh, law compliance uh, financial system I somewhere? I don't think we do. I mean, 10 percent across the board, I'm telling you. <laughs> we find it. But uh, this is really the fascinating part for me. I mean, I tell people, you think Sharia law will take over as if it hasn't done so. It did already. Yes. We're going to talk about Sharia law later in more detail. But Sharia is not like a Western law. As a matter of fact, this is an interesting point. Everything in Islam is kind of like Western civilization. But when you look at it real close, it's not like it at all. So this is just one of those examples of where they, you would think it would be the same, but it turns out to be very different. Very good. I think maybe we should wrap up this particular episode, but when we come back, we'll continue to talk about these sources. And I'd like to also t discuss a like, different point of view about Islam. You know, uh, And what I mean by that is, uh, who do you ask about Islam and what answer you may perceive from them? And does that point of view or response coincide with the trilogy, if you wish. Mm -hmm. So these are very important things. And uh, I think, you know, we're coming to really uh, uh, a close to wrap up this particular, you know, introductory series. We called it Understanding Islam. After that, I think we're going to dedicate a big portion of our uh, videos to specific topics. Yes. Uh, I think we agreed we're going to talk about the status of women in Islam. Very we are so. going to talk about slavery. And then if time allows, we may talk about the Sharia. And there is also uh, talking about the treatment of people of other faith as well. Now, the good news is um, we're not going anywhere. You know, this is the beginning of this particular political Islam series, you know, and I know where Bill uh, is and we'll continue to do this. So uh, the amount of videos we'll be doing just in the next few days 
uh, will be released probably over the course of months. So uh, technically speaking, people will not be deprived <laughs> from knowing anything about this topic. So thank you again, uh, Bill, and thank you uh, everyone for watching. And please send us your comments, send your questions, and interact with us, and we'll make sure that uh, Bill either directly or indirectly also gets those particular questions as well. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you for watching. Please like our video, and we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sierra International, and be sure also to click the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we upload new videos into the channel. And finally, I like to prayerfully encourage you to become a patron through Patreon. Your giving is much needed and will enable us to produce more and more of videos like this so that we can publish them on a weekly basis. So thank you in advance.